Welcome back. This is Sean Mars, and thanks for joining me for SolidWorks at Home. In this last part of my uh, kitchen knife sheath series, I'm going to finally finish by putting on this uh, image onto the front top of the piece. So I'm going to go through three different methods that you could go about doing this, uh, one of which I actually used to be revealed at the end. Uh, but those three are going to be the 3D texture tool, the uh, auto trace add-in and then importing a DXF or DWG as a sketch. So more on how I even got this DXF uh, will be at the end here. So the first thing we're going to start with is the 3D texture. So this is something that came out in 2019, uh, a couple years ago. And what this is going to do is it's going to take a an appearance file uh, that I add to a face here, so I'm making a little split-lined area here, and it's going to take that appearance and it's going to turn it into a mesh body. It's actually going to turn the whole thing into a mesh body. So um, this is something that's great for really rapid prototyping for the 3D printer community there, because uh, it's going to be creating mesh geometry in SolidWorks. Which once we do that, it's not going to be very friendly to work with afterwards. Like there's more and more tools every year, but we really want this to be the last piece. So I'm just going to drag and drop this. Uh, PNG onto this face here, but it could be other types of image files like TIFFs or JPEG or something. Then I'm just going to go and edit that uh, appearance, and this is how I'm going to get this placed in the correct spot. So I'm going to rotate, um, scaling it up here, and I'm just making my little tweaks and adjustments before I go into the feature. Um, luckily, this is something you can actually adjust the image afterwards and then rerun the feature. That's fine. So we'll start up 3D texture, and basically what it's going to do is it's going to find the black areas on my uh, image and raise them up. So uh, in this case, I have a really stark black-white image, so it's going to have stark boundaries. Uh, you can see that I have a lot of little mesh triangles. That's the actual tessellation here. But it still comes out pretty chunky, even though I basically just ranked up all the, the settings as far as they would go. So the other option you have with this tool is to give things that have a gradient where the black and white kind of blends together. So what I'm going to do is just swap out the image here. You can see these ones aren't stark black and white. They kind of blend between the black and white. And this will give us a blend in height as well. So you can see that the, these are much more rounded. Now. A lot of this is going to end up coming down to the resolution of my 3D printer. And so this is fairly small for it. So I don't think either of these approaches actually work amazing here. But I will link a video that uh, my buddy Jesse did where he used this same tool to 3D print some really nice looking textures. So uh, the next one we're going to is Auto Trace. This one's been around for a long time and it's actually a subset of just a sketch picture. So you insert a sketch picture and you can turn on the add in Auto Trace. And essentially, SolidWorks is going to try to trace those black and white images. So what it will give us is uh, circles and ellipses and splines, but you can see that it didn't do an amazing job all over the place. This is about as far as I can expect Autotrace to get for uh, kind of a bunch of funky shapes like this. So I'm just using the Fit Spline tool to go in and reconnect areas that had gaps, um, smooth out bits, and generally give me a similar shape with the least amount of work. There are some spots that were completely missed, and so I'm just gonna have to go in there and uh, trace over the image with splines. So now this is a fully manual work at this point, and that's just to get a couple of these extra bits. Alrighty, otherwise extrude up, and that actually looks pretty good at the end. The last one is actually using a tool called Inkscape. So I got, I figured this out. I didn't figure this out. Uh, Garrett Klein, another uh, applications engineer at Hawkridge, showed me this. And basically, you can take a nice black and white image like this, convert it to a bitmap or its bitmap trace, and then you can save that directly out to a DXF. So this is like the most true to the actual shape. Uh, and then you just import it in as a sketch in SolidWorks. So honestly, this is going to give me the truest to the image. Uh, once again, all of these methods really rely on you being able to get some decent black-white images here. I think I might have messed around with this one in um, GIMP, which is another free photo ed editor tool. So it's kind of like free Photoshop. Uh, Inkscape is also free if you're like a guy that does a lot of... Uh, uh, or a person that does a lot of water jet or laser or something like that, uh, you might already 
know about that tool. But in the end, I just imported it in as Sketch, and then I'm just doing a bunch of scaling and moving, and maybe modify Sketch could also be a useful one to use in this in this point here. Um, but move entities, scale entities, are really the only way to get this uh, uh, in place and the right size. Uh, you can see at some point when I scaled this, my sketch actually went over to find, and I honestly don't know where that happened or you know exactly what happened with that. Uh, but you'll see that it does cause me a bit of an issue in a moment here, but it's actually, in this case, fortunately, very easily figured out with the repair sketch tool. So I tried to go right into extruding it, and then I didn't wanna have to go and select everything, and it just wasn't really working out, so. I back out of this. Come on, Sean. Get up. Give up, Sean. This isn't what you want to do. All right. Now I back out of this and I just run Repair Sketch. And Repair Sketch, um, in this case, actually just did a really good job of just closing some small gap that was somewhere. I don't even know where it was. Um, or it might have been a ton of little gaps, honestly. Um, but either way, it closed it enough to make it so I can extrude this. So that's great. Now, in the end, which one did I use? We'll actually use auto trace and the manual tracing of splines and it's not for any other reason other than the fact that Garrett didn't tell me about that cool inkscape uh, technique until after I already printed this thing and it is sitting in my kitchen drawer and I've been using it for months so um, otherwise I might use the inkscape I mean honestly this thing was supposed to look a little bit organic and kind of artsy or whatever um, and so I think the, the look it came out was I'm actually really happy with it. I think it looks really cool so in the end uh, it all worked out and uh, that's done with that project. So thanks for joining me for another episode of SolidWorks at Home. And if you liked this, then check out more of our SolidWorks videos. Uh, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.